Woman, more mead. Since I'm fresh out of the blood of my enemies for more mead. <laughs> The purpose of this video is to show you how to make this simple chair using a minimum number of hand tools. All it requires is a panel saw, a chisel, a square, and a pencil. I'll go ahead and show some alternative tools you can use too to make your life easier, but really I wanted to make this a back to basics themed video. To begin, I cut the two pieces of 2x10 two to length. The exact measurements are somewhat relative, but I'll have a link in the comments section below for the dimensions that I used. I should also note that these are third class cuts. They're pretty rough. I'm not bothering with a marking knife or anything like that, as this is supposed to have a rustic look. For the seat piece, I mark out the length of the seat and then the width of the tongue that will pass through the back piece. Now I rip along the length of that mark for the tongue. The bigger, saw, the bigger the saw you got here, the easier it'll be. Take it slow as you get right up to your line. I'm making my cross cut second here, however through trial and error I discovered that it's best to make your rip cut the second cut. That way if as the fibers break right as you complete the second cut it tears with the grain right into your cross cut. That large rip cut saw left a bit of a rough edge here, so we want to clean it up and make sure that it's nice and square. Believe it or not, you can do this with your chisel. However, if you want to be more precise, go ahead and get in there with a the hand plane. You'll need a chisel plane or, again, just the chisel to get right up to that shoulder, though, where we made our cross cut. Whichever method you use, you do want a consistent width on this piece of the chair, however, as it has to pass through the hole. Once I've got that tongue cut and plane to its final dimension, I can lay out the hole. It's important to note here that I'm using the actual tongue itself for the dimensions of the hole, not measuring. Now for the real fun part, cutting out that hole with just a chisel and a mallet. So the biggest tip here is to keep your strop handy because this is a lot of chopping and you're going to want to tune up that edge from time to time. The rest of this is handled like just about any other mortise you're going to encounter. I'll refer you to uh, Paul Seller's video in the comments below where he really shows the proper way of doing a mortise with a chisel. If you have a coping saw and a drill bit, you could uh, drill a hole here 
and cut out the square with your coping saw and then just finish off the corners with your chisel. It's a lot faster. Once you've got your hole cut out, now you need to test fit it. It doesn't actually have to be a super tight fit here. And there you go. Theoretically, you're done at this point. But we're going to go ahead and add some modifications to this chair, too. Here I'm using a square to mark the top of my head so I don't end up cutting off too much extra wood. For comfort, we're going to angle off the corners of the seat. and also round off the front edge of the seat. Now I know I've shown before how to do this with a hand plane, but you can do it with a chisel as well. In fact, the multifaceted kind of look we're gonna have here will help add to the uh, rustic theme. splitting I want to round off the corners here and here. This rounding is performed just like before but in this case we only really have to round off the side that is touching the ground. This is actually a step I haven't seen in other builds of this chair however I think it will really prevent a lot of damage to the bottom. For fun, we can add a shape to the top of the chair. Here I'm marking the excess that can be cut away with a panel saw for speed. Spider attack! Oh, come on, dude. I chiseled down to your line. You can be very aggressive at first. After you remove most of the waste with your mallet, transition to paring by hand, as I'm showing here. Well, that certainly has a uh, rustic look to it. I also recommend using your chisel to break all the 90 degree corners on your pieces. This will help prevent splintering and add comfort. And of course if you have a coping saw, it would be no problem to cut this curve with a coping saw as well.
Another alternative step here is you can add some stability to the legs by cutting out a V or an arch in the middle of them, and thus making the chair more of a tripod than a bipod. To avoid a sharp point that may split, I chisel the final cut out here. And you'll notice that uh, apparently I'm hitting hard enough to knock the camera out of focus. And here's more of the arch style that I mentioned earlier. In continuing with the rough and rustic theme of this chair, I'm using up the excess steel wool and vinegar from my previous video to oxidize this wood. Let's see what it turns out like. And here you can see the weathered effect on the seat compared to the untreated back. For a protective finish, I used Armor Seal. And just for fun, let's add in some embellishment in the form of carving. A little Mjolnir for my Viking chair. That's about it for this build. Remember I'll put the uh, dimensions in the description below and I hope this shows that you don't need a whole lot of tools to make some fun stuff.